Time for a review of a cracking little pistol that ticks all the quality boxes you could ever really need, and yet is often overlooked. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Now, everyone loves a Glock, even me, especially the Glock 17 Gen 4. Now, if you like the Glock, then believe you me, you're really going to like this one. It's the H&K USP. Admittedly, it's not going to have appeared on as many A-listed films as the Glock, but that's not why I like the Glock. I like it because of its feel, strippability, weight and quality feel. Well, hold the front page, because the USB, no, UPS, no, USP, ticks all the same boxes and more besides. Let's take a closer look, shall we? It is 205 millimetres or a hair over 8 inches long and the official weight is 976 grams or 2.15 pounds which in the real world with a 12 gram CO2 on board is going to be around 1,030 grams or a little over 2.2 pounds which is enough to let you know you have something substantial in the palm of your hand. Not a word. It has a similarly square profile to the Glock and feels just as comfortable, if not a little more so with that weight and trigger position. It is all black and has a metal slide and polymer bottom. The front sight is fixed and open with white dot and has a matching rear open sight with corresponding and matching white dots. This, being made by Umarex under licence, means it isn't adorned with bold white labels all over it to spoil the looks and have you reaching for your black sharpie. There is a rail on the underside front to add toys and probably one of the best safeties I've seen on a pistol. It is only on the left-hand side but is easily operated by right-handed shooters using their thumb. There is a safety mode which simply makes the trigger redundant and there is the fire mode which is, I suppose, self-explanatory but even in fire mode the trigger will activate and operate the hammer but the pistol will not fire unless the slide has been cocked at which point it's live and ready to go. Now it doesn't end there because you can decock the gun by pressing down on the safety and the hammer will go back to the half cocked position. Remove the mag, pull the trigger and it will completely be decocked. And that double safety comes into effect and it won't fire again until you cock that top slide. The dropout for the magazine is in front of the grip and forms part of the trigger guard and can be operated from either side. The 18 round BB magazine is remarkably similar to the Glocks but a little bigger and no, they're not interchangeable. That trigger is a two-stage item and sits further forward than the Glock. It is broader and fits my hand better, being slightly further away from the grip itself. Talking about the grip, it is pretty heavily stippled, which is quite comforting for something of this weight. Loading the magazine is slightly more fiddly than the Glock because even though the spring will hold back in place when you've pulled it all the way down there is no hole to load the BBs in and they should be fed into the top. 
I did find, however, that if you pull it all the way down and hold it yourself, it is possible to fill with BBs in front of the spring mechanism. And this will be my preferred choice of loading methods. It is field strippable and needs the magazine removing. Then move the slide part way back until you can pull out the side and away you go. The reverse obviously is the way to put it back and you need to line it up the slide with the cutout in the bottom of the grip. Once you've lined it up the pin will then go back quite nicely. That is probably one of the easiest ones that I've used. Popping the CO2 in is simply removing the bottom screw from the magazine, dropping in a CO2 point first, ideally after putting a drop of silicon oil on the top, then carefully realign the threads, making sure that they're lined with the thread itself, not the base of the magazine. Once you're in, quick tighten up with the supplied hex key, pop it back in and you're all ready to go. Right then, time to drop this over the chronograph. Now I'm not expecting high power levels because that's not what these are about. They're a replica type pistols and fun plinkers. Using standard, 5.35 grain steel BBs, it saw 342 feet per second, which is 1.39 foot pounds or 1.88 joules. Reading the manual, it states you should only use standard BBs. Steel ones at that. Well, I'm here to test these things, not just take the manual's word for it. So, out with the ASG plastic BBs, which at around two grains saw a whopping 504 feet per second. <laughs> wow. But because they're lightweight, that only equates to 1.13 foot pounds or 1.53 joules. Frangibles next. Dust devils to you and I. And at 4.35 grains, they saw 360 feet per second, which is 1.25 foot pounds or 1.7 joules. So the main takeaway here is the USP is really quite happy using any of these without issue. So speed is possible and so is non-ricocheting. All good news. Time to get this out on the range at 10 metres then. Here goes. The H&K Hecklen Koch USP. I know I've done the jokes on the USB and everything else. Now the, the, the only downside on this one as far as I'm concerned is the fact that it doesn't load properly they haven't got a proper opening for the pellets but the pellets bbs i do beg your pardon but if you do pull it back far enough you can get them in and that's the route that i would go down even though it's a little bit tough on the thumb they double stack up the issue you've got if you put too many in which i've just done is it doesn't want to then send the spring back into place i've done it Cool. Now I'm not sure how much gas I've got in this because I've just fired one lot off. So we'll try again. What do I think to it? I think it's been overlooked. I do like the Glock. The Glock 17 Gen 4 is the one to have if you're going to have a Glock, in my opinion. Yes, I know it's BB. I never really prefer pellets. The pellets are a bit more accurate. They're a bit less ricochet, but there's so many different types of ammunition you can put through this if you're careful which is what I've done and I've had no problems 
you don't have to worry too much about the ricochet it's about the experience it's the ownership it's the feel of it the thing feels wonderful it feels solid there's no rattles all over the place which you do get actually on on the original firearms it feels nice this is actually a little bit more comfortable in the hand and my hand than the glock 17 to be fair nice broad trigger it's pushed further forward so i'm actually on the pad of my finger a lot easier i like it it's comfortable accuracy let's have a look we're down range at 10 meters it's a very windy day it's been raining all day it's the first moment i've had to get out when it wasn't raining and i can feel it starting in the air so we'll get on with it but on a windy day like this do i really expect that a, 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 a bb gun outside is going to be that accurate not really but it's let's just give it a bit of a try shall we and let's see if it's if it's actually going to do it i'm just going to check to make sure that camera's working because it wasn't earlier on right target's all set up camera's all set up and running let's give it a go i'm going to rest because we're supposed to be testing the gun not me the only thing is the sights i really struggle to actually see through these sights let's try one way or another here we go lock open now the thing is oh i can see now <laughs> i couldn't actually see what i'd hit at all i just picked a point and kept firing lock open after last shot this does feel really nice you've got that safety feature which takes it back to half cock take the magazine out drop it through put it on safety you can't get much safer than that i do like that it's one of the nicest safeties that i've seen it's dead easy to feel strip as well that target work let me just go and get it and i'll show you because i'm quite pleased with that here we go i mean that's blowing all over the place at the minute absolutely blowing all over the place there's your main grouping which to be honest is not that bad there's one gone out and one gone out there for somebody who can't really see that's that's a grouping couple of inches out at 10 meters with a bb gun or a BB gun, as you guys across the pond like to call them. I think that is pretty good. That's more than good enough to be taking tin cans out. No problem at all. It's a nice feel. It's the experience of ownership. The wind is coming in again. It's either going to blow up some rain or something. I absolutely love this. I think it has been overlooked. I did shoot it many, many moons ago. And I'd forgotten, to be fair, just how good that is. It's so solid and nicely made, and it's not expensive. You watch, I'll say that, people will start rushing out and buying it, and then Umrex are going to want to put the price up. So get in there soon, I suppose. That's a nice one for the collection, a really nice one. That's it, I'll shut up. Back to the studio, before it rains. Not bad, but like I said, this is really about the feel and the ownership and the ability to take out those pesky tin cans that are raiding your back garden. The blowback is really good and gives a really satisfying feel to this quality made pistol from the guys and girls at Umarex. It's great fun and at around £190 UK, it's that little bit cheaper than the Glock and represents pretty good value for money. Not one to be overlooked, not in my opinion. Time to get clicky. <laughs> Please thumbs up, subscribe, share and hit the old notification alarm bell. Check out the AAR website and of course a big thank you to Vector Air for their continued help in making these reviews possible. The biggest thanks, as always, goes out to you for watching and supporting the channel. Oh, what about this then? A new feature. Comment of the week. <laughs> Aiming for an hour with a stabilised gun at a target at 35 metres 
a PCP gun shooting with a shit mm -mm, 30 bar. Yup, a real target master. With a laughing, tearful face. Pretty good going, that. Aiming for an hour on a programme that lasted less than 15 minutes. And has he never heard of bench rest shooting? The range was, in fact, 40 metres, not 35, with the PCP running 230 bar, not 30. I've got tyres that pump up more than 30. Yep, a real informed shooter. <laughs> but thank you so much for the entertainment. You gave us all a really good laugh. Please stay safe and shoot safe. And I'll see you all next week, hopefully. Bye for now. I do like this. <laughs>